Member for Pariah. Uh, Mr Speaker, my question is to the Minister for Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries. Is the Minister aware that today is National uh, Apple and Pear Day? Is the Minister also aware that the growers have organised protests against the government's draft import risk assessment, which would allow apples to be imported into Australia from New Zealand and expose the Australian industry to the threat of fire blight? Will the Minister now admit that under his stewardship there has been a loss of confidence among growers in the government's import risk assessment Karaya, process, come to his question. and will the minister now follow Labor's lead and restore the integrity of the import risk assessment process by committing to a process that is based on science and science alone? <laughs> Member for Fisher. I deliberately didn't raise this matter in the presence of the New Zealand Speaker for reasons that parliamentarians will understand. But if any parliamentarian refers to House of Reps practice, the guide for the parliament, of course, on page 159, they will find reference to food and refreshments being brought into the chamber and the Speaker's reaction. I am not standing here being pedantic about this so-called protest. I am standing here because when first this was mooted, the staff, of, the staff of this chamber specifically asked the member for Franklin not to proceed with the matter, and in defiance of the chair, he did so. The member for Franklin will apologise to the chair. The member for Prospect is warned. The member for Franklin. So Mr. Out there. Mr. Speaker, Member at, for Franklin, Mr. Speaker, as today is National Apple and Member Pear Day, Franklin. and as I proudly represent one of the five seats in the Apple Isle, yeah. I symbolically placed a pink lady on the desk of each of my colleagues prior to question time. Good on you. you, Mr. Speaker, had these apples returned to my office, and I was told that you had asked them to be removed. I brought in one apple and placed it on my desk, and I thought this was appropriate on this National Apple and Pear Day. And I honestly believe that I have nothing to apologise for. The member for Franklin had specific instructions from my office. He will apologise or I will deal with him. The member for Franklin had specific instructions for which he also had individual responsibility. Member for Franklin. Mr Speaker, the apples were returned to my office. I had no instruction. That the attendant presented me with a half case of apples and I was told that you had asked them to be removed. I had no other further instruction. And as I said, I brought this apple in individually and placed it on my desk, and I don't think I have anything to apologise for. The Honourable, I will recognise the leader of the opposition when his own when his own members exercise the courtesy of allowing to be heard. The Leader of the Opposition. Uh, Mr Speaker, I'd just appeal to you to show some leniency in this matter, given that the apples are not being used as food. They're not being eaten in the chamber. Um, the member comes from the Apple Isle, as we know it so proudly. Uh, I don't feel that the House is being brought into disrepute, that its reputation will be damaged in any way, and I just ask you to take those thoughts into account as you deal with the matter. The member for McKellar will resume her seat. Let me indicate to the Leader of the Opposition I understand the spirit of his intervention, but let me also point out to him that I have already exercised a great deal of leniency in my dealings with the member for Franklin. I take his word that there was no specific instruction that meant that the other apples came into the chamber, but equally, in defiance of what I specifically instructed, he chose to bring apples an apple into the chamber, and I have asked him, in a lenient act on the part of the chair, to apologise. His failure to do so will leave me with no choice. 
The member for Franklin. The member for Franklin. Mr. Mr. Speaker, I have nothing further to add. Then I name the member for Franklin. Leader of the House. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I move that the member be suspended from the service of the House. The question is that the motion be agreed to. All those that opinion say aye. aye. Contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. Is the division required? Ring the bells. Lock the doors. The question is that the member for Flinders be that the member for Franklin be suspended from the service of the House.
The ayes will pass to the right of the chair and the noes to the left. I appoint the honourable members for Karangamite and Mallee tellers for the eyes, honourable members for Melbourne Ports and Franklin tellers for the noes. Remind the member of Ballarat that suspending orders are not suspended during a division. Order. The result of the division is eyes 80, no 64. The question is therefore resolved in the affirmative. The member is suspended for understanding order 303 for 24 hours. The Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries and Forestry. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mr. Speaker. And whilst members may have now forgotten the question asked by the honourable member for Corio, the answer. Uh, the minister the, has the call. The answer to the first question is yes. I am. I am aware that today is the National Apple and Pear Day. In fact, yesterday, yesterday, I issued a press release encouraging all Australians to eat an apple or a pear today because it was not only good for their health. But it's also good for our country. Now, the answer Member to the second Brisbane. part of the honourable member's question, where he attempted to allude that Labor was supportive of a science-based quarantine system, leaves me somewhat puzzled because that's opposite to what the member for Corio said when he was speaking on Radio 2AY uh, just a couple of days ago. Because on 2AY he actually said that, uh, that uh, urged me to ignore the scientists in dealing with IRA and suggested that I should take the advice of a, of a committee of politicians on that matter. A committee Order. of politicians. So is Labor in favour of a science-based system or isn't, it, or isn't it? Does the member for Corio in backing science Minister. today, two days ago in radio, he wanted politicians to make the decision? Now, Mr Speaker, at the meeting of agriculture ministers in Adelaide uh, just uh, last, uh, last week, uh, ministers agreed unanimously. Ministers agreed unanimously, and this included the Labor state ministers, that decisions in relation to import risk assessments need to be based on science. They also, they also in a joint communique, emphasised the importance of, of, of respecting the professionalism of the scientists involved in the IRA process. 
They reaffirmed the importance of scientific independence in the biosecurity process. Now, Mr. Speaker, in relation to apples, the Biosecurity Australia appointed a panel of leading experts to oversee an assessment of the scientific issues associated with the import of apples from New Zealand. They have issued an interim report, which is now open for public consultation. Uh, the public now has an, any opportunity they choose to raise scientific issues of concern until about the 23rd of June, uh, when the, uh, th that consultation period closes. After that, the scientific issues will again be assessed. This government is committed to import risk assessments based on science. We have an obligation under the, under the World Trade Organisation to deal with issues in that regard. We export two-thirds of all the agricultural products that we produce. We want other countries to have a science-based quarantine system, and that's what we intend to deliver also for Australia. The, the other element of the hypocrisy of Labor in relation to this matter is when we look back to their days in office. Yeah. Not only did they not have an open and transparent import risk assessment process, but once the arrangements were in place, they had so few quarantine officers that there was nobody at the border to inspect the product anyhow. Uh, under this government, there has been a major upgrading, $600 million commitment to ensure that we keep I our borders safe McMillan. and secure. Our process will be based on sound science. And, uh, and, and if, per chance, at some stage in the future, uh, apples are allowed in from another part of the world, it will be under conditions that are safe and secure. And I've got every confidence that high-quality Australian pink lady pass. apples will be able to compete with any product that comes into this country. I've got more confidence in this industry than it's obvious that Labor has. Prime Minister. Prime Minister.